welcome to Mad About Market Time. Ritu, with me as always, Manglam. Hi, Manglam. Hi, Ritu. Uh, you know, I had quinoa salad for breakfast today and I'm likely to have bajra roti for lunch and maybe something ragi related for dinner. Does that ring a bell? It does. And you know, it's only very recently in office from, uh, you know, our head of production, Shang Jai Shankar, that I heard about foxtail millets. Oh, wow. I mean, it really is the year of the millets and it is on top of mind. So that's what we discussed today on Mad About Market. Let's do that. <laughs> well, we'll do that because, you know, uh, we have a historical significance as well when we talk about millets. There is evidence that these grains were found in the Indus civilization in 3000 BC. Did you also know that millets were one of the first plants to be domesticated for food? And today they're grown in more than 131 countries. In Asia and Africa alone, millets remain a traditional food for nearly 60 crore people. Wow, 60 crore people for so many years, the millennia of the millets. Uh, this, of course, is the international year of the millets, but let's talk about how big the market opportunity is and the fact that it's on a steady rise. As of 2022, the international opportunity or the market size of millets were close to around $12.3 billion. That's likely to go all the way up to $16.3 billion by 2028, not too far away from here, growing at about 4-4.5% 4, 4 compounding rate. But the opportunity is a lot larger, right? Well, that's the global opportunity that we're talking about, right? So let's also focus on India and how that fares. Because India is the world's top millet producer today with a 19% share in, in fact, the total production. The top five producers, including Nigeria, Sudan, US and China, along with India, make up more than half of the global production. Let's also take a look at the consumption pattern here. Now, the top 10 countries account, accounted for almost 80% of the total consumption in 2022 of a little over 19 million metric tons, and India accounts for 20% of that global share. When you break it down, about a third of this 90 million metric ton is used for animal feed. The remaining 70% plus is used for food, seed, and industrial use. Alright, so that's about the countries that produce millet, consume millet and the reasons or the places where millets are consumed. But importantly, what the opportunity is, we have with us Prashant Parmeshwaran, who's the MD and CEO of Tata Consumer Soulful, and Raju Bhupati, founder and CEO of True Good. Well, uh, thanks a lot, gentlemen, for joining in. And Prashant, coming to you first, uh, what according to you is the opportunity size in millets? The way I look at millets and the opportunity that we actually have is across the entire foods category. Uh, and if I look at packaged foods, uh, I think it has a play. It can run across all the categories, ranging from breakfast cereals to snacking to uh, biscuits to noodles to pasta to pancakes. So it can go across and it can actually have a share within each of these categories. So in fact, if I even say... Uh, it has the ability to go to 5 to 10% of the entire packaged foods industry. Well, let's talk about those categories, Raju. Then, you know, what is the current share of millet place snacks in the overall snacking industry for India? We have seen the, you know, great traction in the millet space. However, if you really compare uh, the millet snacks as, as, as compared with, uh, you know, the regular oil deep, deep fried, you know, oil snacks in the 5 to 10 rupee category, it is still fractional. And we have, we are seeing uh, Huge growth in the in the coming years. Well, it could be five to ten percent of the overall packaged food industry, as per the experts. But why are we going on and on about millets, right? Well, it's uh, of course extremely beneficial for one's health. But remember, it's also economically beneficial. They're much cheaper to grow than some of the more popular grains that you and I consume. In fact, they're hardy, drought resistant, and require less water. If you just take a look at you know the numbers out there, they consume a staggering seventy percent less water than rice grow in half the time it takes to grow wheat and need 40% less energy for processing than maize itself. I mean, we talk about efficiencies, mm. bringing technology in and optimizing resources. Yeah. What better than millets here? Sure, but you know, it's not that easy to sell to the consumers. These are coarse grains we're talking about. Let me actually put that to our guest. Prashant, you know, millets aren't really the tastiest food out there. How do you make sure you're able to sell more to the consumers without adding more sugar and fat? We cannot allow or request, even if you will, the consumer to change his or her palate. He or she is spending his or her hard-earned 5 rupees, 10 rupees, 20 rupees, what it may be, or even 100, 400 rupees. But what we need to deliver is the promise of darn good food. And it is very, very important for us to stay focused on that. And that's been a very, very core pillar for us, which is also the reason... Uh, that we have been having significant growth uh, at Soulful and how we have been really 
increasing our piece of our business is because the consumers are really liking and appreciating the kind of taste, the generation that the product is actually delivering to the consumer. Well, hang on, gentlemen. We'll come to you in just a bit. Now, we know India has a remarkable story when it comes to millets. We predominantly produce Jwar, Bajra and Ragi, which together make up 98% of all the millets that we produce in India. In 2012, the country produced 16.3 million metric tons of millets. By 2022, that has increased to 17.6 million metric tons. This growth is noteworthy because the decrease in area under millet cultivation that took place during that 10 year period. The productivity has improved but only marginally when you look at the last decade. Uh, more than one metric ton per hectare to nearly 1.3 metric ton per hectare. But the per capita consumption, that has actually dropped drastically from 30.94 kilograms per annum to 60s in the 60s to about 3.87 kilograms per annum now. What explains this significant drop? Well, Production has mostly remained stagnant, as we told you, and the population, of course, has been increasing, and hence this decline in per capita consumption, which now, of course, the government is trying to drive up. And people were thinking of uh, millets as coarse and not really cool as all the other things which were grown, right? But until recently, millets have largely been neglected, like Ritu pointed out, and overlooked as well. Whereas other fancier grains like wheat, rice have taken the spotlight. However, this story is now slowly and steadily changing. Millets received some attention in 2012 when the then government crafted a policy called Initiative for Nutritional Security through intensive millet production. In 2018, millets were declared as nutri cereals and added to the National Food Security Mission itself. And 300 crore rupees were earmarked for its development. That's not all. It was in 2018 that the Indian uh, government actually proposed to the UN to declare 2023, which is the year that we are in right now, as the International Year of Millets. That gave millets a shot in the arm. And the government, uh, government actually earmarked nearly 800 crore rupees or 100 million dollars for millet-based products under its production-linked incentive schemes, the PLI schemes as we know it. And there were 33 applicants who were selected. This year's union budget also announced funding for the Indian Institutes of Millets Research in Hyderabad for further R&D. So there is a fair amount of government support coming in as well. So let's get in our guests. Well, uh, Raju, actually, let me come to you. You know, what more needs to be done to make millet a more mainstream, uh, you know, grain from a company as well as a policy perspective, given the events, health and economic benefits we've been speaking about? Uh, so, if you see, like, you know, how a product can be a mainstream product. So, the mainstream product necessarily have to have three, four uh, predominant parameters. One is the shelf life. Um, the Western products that are imported in India, like you know the chocolates and bounty and many major many things that are imported into India, uh, come with at least a minimum of uh, nine months to one year shelf life. So we have to uh, for our, for uh, in order for us to achieve that level of shelf life, um, so the quality of the grain in the millets, you know, you have to really standardize the quality of the grain because millets are grown across India. The pH levels and the overall soil salinity levels are quite abnormally different. Well, despite being the world's top producer of millets and having a lot of government push, India's share in the world's millet exports has fluctuated over the years and is now under 2%. However, India is throwing up a roadmap to figure among the top three exporters come 2025. The future does look promising, especially with the potential export opportunities. So let's have a look at them. Now, with the increasing popularity and demand, there are tremendous opportunities for various millet-based products uh, from grain and flour to biscuits and beverages. In fact, a study by Yes Bank finds that India has the potential to export millet and millet-based value-added products worth $2 billion come 2030. Now, that's an opportunity players do not want to miss. And they aren't missing it for sure. I mean, if you just take a look at the major companies who mm. are present in the food space in India, yeah. we have Britannia, ITC, Tata, Nestle, all of them are jumping, hopping on the millet bandwagon as early as they can and investing monies as well. We have Britannia, you know, talking about nutrient choice biscuits, cookies with millets, added uh, noodles, pastas, uh, ragi, vermicelli, the whole host coming in from the stable of ITC. Nestle has made an announcement that they will add millets to even something like Maggi and Tata Soul Food from Tata Consumer has a two-year pipeline of products. So all of them definitely looking at uh, millets as an important part of their overall portfolio. So let's ask Tata what that uh, product pipeline is. Prashant, uh, what kind of investment are you looking at in this space? 
we have not just built a highly automated and one of India's largest value-added processing plants, which is dedicated to millets uh, in the outskirts of Bangalore. We are also setting up another factory in the um, uh, in, in in the northern to central part of India. So that's on that front. We are investing heavily on research and development to bring out new products. And like we discussed uh, earlier, which is entering into very many new categories. And the third, at the front end, we are also investing in communicating, connecting, and getting the consumers to really touch, feel, and gain, and get to taste the product and really start bringing them into your consumption fold. All right, Raju. Um, you know, let's talk about millet-based snacks. I mean, we've spoken about how everyone is getting into things like Maggi and noodles and all of that and stuff. Can they be as popular as, say, something like chips, biscuits, chocolates? Can millets be the mainstay? Millets, uh, while of course uh, have highly nutritious content, uh, uh, but there are some challenges in terms of shelf life as well. So, if you really compare, uh, you know, between the millets and as well as the wheat and the corn-based uh, chips and uh, you know your uh, starch-based chips, uh, the shelf life is uh, remains a challenge. So, when you uh, look at you know whether it can really compete into the mass market, yes, it's it's got tremendous potential to compete into the mass market. So, uh, true good, the products that we have launched, like, you know, 5 rupee and 10 rupee, uh, uh, look at the scale that we have achieved uh, in the last two to three years in terms of selling, like, a 2 million products per day, which essentially means that, yes, we can cater to uh, mass market. Ma mass market is primarily 5 rupee, 10 rupee. If we are able to produce uh, the millet-based snacks in the 5 rupee and 10 rupee market, yes, definitely uh, millet is going to revolutionize that uh, space as well. All right, hold your thoughts, gentlemen. We have another guest joining us in the studio. Devendra Chavla, the founder of Samyog Health Foods, is with us. Devendra, welcome to CNBC TV 18, and thank you for joining us here right. on Mad About nice Market. Thank you, Devendra. So, we just heard from True Good about why it's hard to make millets more mainstream. What, according to you, are some of the issues that need to be fixed? Right, so uh, one of the issues around millets is the awareness about their health benefits. Yeah. So millets are an extremely good source of carbohydrate. Mm. They are high in fiber and low GI compared to other cereals, which yeah. means they help control blood sugars better. They are also very high in micronutrients. Mm. Right. You know, a couple of things that really stand out, and we had uh, discussed that when we did the health foods uh, episode on our show, was that people are willing to pay only so much more for something which is healthier. How do you make millets a lot more affordable in your day-to-day -day use cases? Because now we go out, we see multigrain chips a lot more expensive than the regular yeah. ones. All the other healthier alternatives are a lot more expensive. So as economies of scale grow, costs come down. So as more people become aware about millets and start consuming millets, the costs themselves will drop. Also, a lot of improvements are happening in the value chain on the processing side to reduce the cost of millets. How much would that investment entail for, say, someone like you? Uh, we don't work on that side of the business. So we make end products that are uh, high in protein and have better quality ingredients like millets. So we make high protein dosas with millets, high protein vermicelli with millets and gluten free flours with millets. Uh, with your production increasing, do you think there are enough capacities and there are enough suppliers of millets? Are you finding any sort of shortage in sourcing millets? We, we don't have any problem in sourcing millets. We find it very easy to find the millets. Um, where we do a lot of work is in improving the textural profile. And so we do a lot of innovation in improving the textural profile of the millets so that it is uh, something the consumer likes consuming better from a taste and texture perspective and it's easier to use in the house. So for example, in our flour, um, by just adding hot water, it's very easy to make a roti hmm. versus regular. And how do you, you know, process it without it losing its nutritional uh, value? So we use mechanical processes to do that. Uh, they don't affect the nutritional value of the product, but they improve the processing capabilities. All right, Devane, hang on. We do have some more questions, but we have to take a short break on that note. Don't go anywhere. When we return, we're going to discuss, as always, the yeas and nays and ask the bigger question. Yes, the bigger question, as always, are millets the future of food? Let's uh, talk about that as well, Devendra. Hang there. Sure. 
So watching us here on Mad About Markets, a futuristic introduction to <laughs> the grain of the past itself. The millets that we're talking about, Ritu, you know, there are a lot of opportunities, but there are some challenges as well. There always are, and we talk about both. You stuff to the A's. The opportunity, the biggest one is, of course, the fact that you can't deny the nutritional and health benefits that millets provide. But the limited awareness about millet products itself is a big hindrance. But the government is behind it, it's supporting it, putting money is behind research and development. But there's inconsistent infrastructure. That's one of the big hurdles for the industry to really overcome. If that fixes, then not only do we have a captive domestic market, but also huge export potential. But there's undeniable competition from other more popular grains like rice and wheat, and that's hard to overcome. Think of a bajra pulao as against a basmati one. But, you know, I take your point. Uh, Value-added products in millets, there is a huge opportunity there. I mean, what if you add some millets in your regular food? Sure, there's opportunity, but there's varied quality standards, and that's something that needs to be more streamlined. I hope that is because these boys are rather strong. They grow in arid regions, drought prone or rather drought prone regions hmm. and they are drought proof. Well, we need more products, more experimentation. There's limited all of that as of now. So that's why there's some challenges that still have to be overcome. Well, so let's talk about these challenges that the companies are facing as well. There is a fair amount of opportunity, Raju, but you know, what are the biggest challenges that millet product companies like you face? We have to regulate this, uh, you know, the pricing market, especially on the millet side, so that, you know, the uh, the overall, the FMCG companies that are aiming to sell to the masses, uh, you know, have better control. So that is very, very critical to have a regulatory on the prices as well. So it cannot go grow from 20 rupee to 50 rupee price points as the demand is growing higher. And also supply from the back end supply also, um, you know, the, the farmers have to be more aware and there are some technologies that are to be given to the farmers so that the yield is going to be more because the, the yield also historically is not that high for the millet. So there are some uh, specialized grains that are to be given to the farmers as well. So the yield is higher. So this is uh, how we have to really look at, uh, you know, hand in hand how the growth has to happen. Well, hold on, gentlemen, because earlier we also spoke to S. Shivakumar, who is the agriculture head of ITC, who said that value-added consumption of millets is yet to happen. Between the potential that exists for millets and the current reality of what is really getting done as a smart consumption from a consumer health perspective, there is still a gap. Yeah. While we do have a fairly significant uh, production of millets, a large part of consumption uh, still happens uh, without necessarily all those kind of uh, magic around millets in terms of why it is being uh, consumed. That value-added consumption is something that must happen because people... Uh, need to understand what are the recipes, what are the cooking uh, kind of uh, differences uh, for millets compared to the grains that one is used to. So the, the from a recipe creation, recipe development to creating food products that suit every occasion and ensuring that the farmer actually produces that kind of quality millets, a synchronized effort has to uh, happen. And then one will get to that uh, potential uh, in the uh, medium to long run. Well, Prashant, you know, we talk about millets being difficult to process. How do we make it ready for all the popular categories where millets are now being used as substitutes for, say, something like wheat and rice? So, two parts to this question, I think, Manglam. One is the processing and the second is the consumer. So, I'll, I will uh, look at them in two buckets. The great part about millets for the consumer is it's just phenomenally good for you. When it, we, we talk about also the phenomenally good for you, it doesn't really have a lot of the nasties. Um, it's pretty much gluten-free. Uh, now, obviously, as that is some benefits that are there uh, from a consumer's lens, the piece that becomes difficult from a processing is food processing is not known how to do things without maida. Right. And I think that's a very, very core pillar at Soulful. And so what we have actually brought in to the place is immense amount of technology, built machines around millets, ensure that we have brought our engineering might to the forefront to really bring the goodness of millets and not skin out the goodness of millets while we process food. Is it difficult? Yes. Is it impossible? No. I think it's just about the sheer dedication that we have uh, towards uh, bringing the goodness of millets to consumers. Uh, the second part is on the consumers. 
uh, is it difficult to consume? I think if brought together well, uh, as we have done in the entire product range, and there are also a lot of other brands that are doing millet-based products, if we bring them together in a form that's convenient and relevant to consumers, I don't see the challenge. Well, as always, it is now time for the bigger question. Are millets the food of the future or are millets the future of food as well? Well, I mean, we will get, um, you know, both Raju and Prashant's views on this. Prashant, go ahead. Uh, I think you'll hear some great news from us soon uh, on what we're doing uh, outside of India. Uh, I think the demand is there. We will have to be at it. There will be some significant investments. Um, do they have the connection to millets as India has from a Ragi Jawar Bajra? Not as much. But uh, do they have a relatability from a quinoa per se? They've seen quinoa. They've brought in quinoa into their lives. And I think that provides millets the door and given the sheer fact of the sustainability piece of millets, I think we have a very, very strong story. Uh, like I said, it's not a one-year phenomena. It's going to be about staying dedicated, staying focused to the cause. Um, I'll tell you just a very basic example which has been known, but I want to tell this very important fact. So for a, for a kg of rice to be produced, uh, uh, nearly 4,000 liters of water is required. So for a millet, alternative millet, which is highly nutritious than the rice, um, about uh, 8 to 15 liters of water to be uh, used. So which essentially means it is absolutely good for earth. Um, so true good, for example, uh, in the last three years, we were able to save 25 billion liters of water because of the you know, high procurement of millet. So that speak huge volumes about how it is so critical for the earth and also this is, uh, you know, weather resilient. This crop it is weather resilient. It also can grow in in the dry lands as well. So as uh, more millets are coming in, um, there is that much uh, greatness for the earth as well. So the millets definitely are going to dominate the market. They're not going to be any longer, like, you know, step grains. Um, so millet definitely is going to get into the mainstream in the next coming years. Well, uh, let's also put this question to Devendra of Samyog Health Food is still with us. Devendra, so the bigger question to you as well. Uh, do you think millets are going to be the food of the future? Uh, you know, putting everything together then. I definitely think millets will be Why? the food of the future. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Couldn't wait for me to finish. So, um, basically they have some serious health benefits compared yeah. to other cereals. Sure. So, if, uh, if, if we can get foods that have these health benefits, it will help make a healthier India which is something that everybody wants today. Everybody yeah. is looking to be healthier. Everyone is looking to eat healthier. Yeah. And millets are a good way of getting India to do that. Also, from a supply chain perspective, they grow in semi-arid and arid regions, which also helps the farmers. Yeah. So, but it's not as... Uh, Straightforward, right? Straightforward as it looks, right? You can't have millet cakes or the processed industry or the processed food industry is very used to using rice, maize and wheat. How do you change all of that to make millet the food of the future? I mean, it's easy to talk. Yeah, so that's where the innovation lies, right? So that's what we're working on, where we work to improve the processing capabilities of the food so that we can make products with the millets and new age ingredients that are healthier for people. Wonderful. Let's hope that there is a healthier future for all of us and which is affordable and tasty. That would really be it, Ritu. That would be it. On that note, we're going to thank all of our guests. Devendra, thank you for being here on Mad About Markets. And thanks also, for thanks for being here. And Prashant and Raju, to you guys as well for joining in here with your thoughts. On that note, we're going to wrap up this discussion. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you same time next week.